Hey, what's going on guys? Marvin here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to break down three more wholesale tips for you guys so that you guys are just better equipped when you are trying to build your wholesale business. And also I've gotten a ton of questions about the website that I keep talking about, the website that you can build within your Seller Central account. I like to call it the 10 second website because it literally takes you about 10 seconds to build that website. So at the end of this video is when I'm going to answer that question and show you exactly how to build it step by step. So if you're interested in utilizing that, then make sure to stay until the end of the video. And also, like always, make sure to like the video if you like it, of course, if you don't like it, then press the dislike. It still helps me with the algorithm. So the first tip I have for you guys is to always, and I mean always double check your products before you buy. This is similar to the measure twice, cut once mentality. If you work on anything around your house, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But you always wanna double check your products before you buy, before you pull the trigger on that product because once you purchase, then that's it. You don't have the ability to double check anymore because the products are already on its way. Take a few extra seconds, take a few extra minutes to really digest the data that you're looking at to make sure it's a good buying decision. Don't get so eager to just get inventory in that you overlook all the data that you have at your disposal. So why do we double check and why do we go back at least a year as far as product research goes? Well, it's very, very simple. Sales history and price history can be inflated oftentimes. Sometimes you'll look at a product, for example, and it's selling for $50. So you think that you're gonna profit off of the $50 sale price for every one of your units, but you're only looking back maybe a week, maybe a month on the keepograph and you think that that's the solid data that you have to go off of, but that's not right. Go back a year, and let's say for this example that we're talking about, the yearly graph tells us that this $50 unit actually sells for $20, $25 the majority of the year. Well, if that's the case, most likely you're gonna lose out on that product, you're gonna have to take a loss on it, and that's not what I want for you guys. You guys should always be in the green, always making a profit. So just make sure to double check your product, take a few extra seconds, look back at least a year, look at the sales history, look at the price history before you purchase a product. Tip number two is regarding your seller name. Now, if you're a brand new seller, this may seem a little silly, but there is a reason why nobody says what their seller name is or why the majority of people don't tell you what they're currently selling. What is their current inventory like? Usually when people break down their products, it's past items, right? Items that you have sold months ago or you no longer have any inventory in. And that's what the majority of people do for a very specific reason. Because you want to protect your business, right? This is your business now. You want to protect it from people trying to do anything malicious. Now, 99% of people aren't going to do anything with your seller name if they happen to get a hold of it. But there is that 1% of people who are just dicks and they are going to try to just maliciously try to mess with your account. Either they're a competitor or they just want to screw up with your success or screw up, you know, the right path that you're on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then let me give you an example. There's a lot of damage that somebody can do just by having your seller central name. So let's say your seller central name is one, two, three wholesale. If somebody gets that information, they can go to your storefront, they can see all of your current inventory, and now they know exactly what seller name you're selling under. So they can buy that specific seller's inventory, let's say, 20%, 50%, whatever they want. Now, even though you're going to get some of those units back, it's still going to be time wasted, time that you're not selling to actual customers. And let me step it up a little more. And let's say that person who's maliciously trying to screw with your account purchases a product from your inventory and says you're selling counterfeit goods. They say you're claiming that you're selling a name brand product that's legitimate, and they're saying, no, this is a fraudulent product. This is counterfeit. Well, if you have even the slightest amount of knowledge on Amazon, you know that Amazon takes counterfeit claims very, very seriously. And you could put your account at risk. Now, like I said, 99% of people aren't going to do all this, and there's more damage that can be made. Now, if you're working with legitimate suppliers and you have all of the proper paperwork that you're supposed to have, then all of these issues can be resolved but it's still a headache. It's still hoops that you're gonna have to jump into. It's still time wasted that you're not selling those products or that you're having to deal with Amazon, you know, questioning your account. So err on the side of caution, keep that information close to the vest and just don't share it with anybody. Unless you don't give a shit, then just do whatever you want. All right, so now tip number three, this is the 10 second website. And like I said, I call it the 10 second website because this can be done very, very fast. And I suggest everyone does this so they have some sort of website to provide suppliers when they do ask for them. <laughs> but one quick second before we get into that 10 second website that I know you guys are all waiting for. If you guys do have wholesale questions or Amazon FBA questions or any questions in general, then comment them down below. I'm thinking of starting a new sort of Q&A video that I have edited for you guys and I'll maybe post it you know once a week or once every other week depending on how much interest people have in it 
So if you do have any questions, whatever they may be, you want me to answer them in an edited video, then just leave them down below. I most likely will never go live on the YouTube channel. I just don't like the way it looks. I think it's very sloppy. I just don't like it. I like my videos a little more clean, a little more crisp. So if you guys want me to do some sort of Q&A video every week or every other week, then let me know down below and also let me know what questions you guys have. Questions that I answer on that video, I will pull directly from this video. So if you want your questions answered, make sure to leave your comments on this video. Okay, so now let's get back to the website. So like I said, you can do this very fast and I'm gonna show you step by step, so just make sure you follow along. So to start out, you're gonna to wanna to be on your Seller Central homepage and you're going to want to click on the settings tab at the top right hand corner of your seller central homepage. once you click on that tab it's going to take you to a new page obviously once you get to this new page you're going to want to click on your seller profile which is going to be on the left hand side of this new page now in this new page is going to show you what marketplaces you're eligible to sell in or you're currently selling in i sell on amazon.com the u.s marketplace so that's the marketplace that i would go to so find the marketplace that you're selling in and next to the marketplace, there's gonna be something that says store details. Next to store details, there's gonna be a tab that you can click on that's gonna say edit. Click on the edit tab, it's gonna take you to the final page and it's gonna look like this. Here you'll have two empty areas that you can enter your seller name. So if your seller name is 123 wholesale, you would enter that in the top box, just enter 123 wholesale. And then in the bottom box where it has an incomplete URL, that is also where you're gonna put your seller central name. So again, if your seller name is 123 wholesale, you would put that at the end of that unfinished URL. After you do that, you click submit and you're done. That is your storefront link. This is a website that you will give to your suppliers. Once you've created it and once it's active, you'll be able to just enter that URL and it'll pop up your storefront. So your Amazon storefront showing all of the products that you sell. You can utilize this with the majority of suppliers that you're gonna be looking for. But one quick note is if you do not have products, I don't think you'll be able to finish this uh, storefront link, but you can still enter it. You're going to know exactly what the URL is going to be. It's going to be amazon.com slash shops slash your store name. So if you don't have any products and the supplier is asking you for a website, then just still enter that exact URL because chances are they're not going to go click on it and research it. But even if they do, that's going to be your website anyway once you get some products in inventory. Now, obviously, this isn't a full-blown, fully functional website outside of Amazon, but for the majority of suppliers you're going to be running into, this will work perfectly fine. Now that you understand these tips and you have these new tips and newfound knowledge in your tool belt, then you're going to want to watch the video on the screen where I break down step-by-step -step how to get to your first 10K in sales on Amazon. I'll see you guys in the next video.